<laughs> All right, guys, we're going to do expires. Um, I know it says four sale by owners and expires, but we're not going to talk much about four sale by owners at all. We're going to talk expires. And um, we got a couple of new people Muhammad, Dan, okay. And I don't know, you guys remember Heath? Heath was here at our sales meeting. Heath is with uh, Bank of America. Uh, Muhammad and Dan are. Muhammad's here. Dan's waiting to get his license, right? Um, so he's he's testing. So he's trying us out here a little bit. Okay, um, we're gonna move fast. Stop me if you guys have any questions, and we'll, maybe we'll have a little bit of a dialogue. God forbid. First and foremost, as with every class, that, by the way, this is all prospecting. Working expires. Listen to this prospecting. We don't do any prospecting unless we have what? Contact. Some sort of contact management. So if you're in this room, you got a couple of new faces here. I don't care what we're talking about when it comes to prospecting. If you don't have a contact management system, stop. I don't want you to do anything that we're going to talk about today unless you have the ability to take a name, plug it into the computer, give an address, an email, a phone number, and be able to put some sort of follow-up action or some sort of drip campaign or the ability to send a letter or an email or whatever it happens to be. Um, and again, if you don't have a contact management system, stop. Okay, now I am logged in as me, and by the way, I'm, I've become less of an expert in searching and navigating the MLS, so if you guys can help me navigate on occasion, um, you will not embarrass me, I promise. Um, I'm going to run this residential hot sheet, which I don't even know what it is, because um, somebody else in this office does this for me. Um, so I'm going to take a quick peek at this. Um, I don't know. Who's running this? Yeah, well, which is fine, but it's still not giving me what I want, apparently. Okay, well, it doesn't really matter. We're just, we're going to pretend. This, first of all, everybody, you have to have access to the MLS. You can't be borrowing somebody else's MLS. So if anybody's sharing MLS IDs, just, you, you cannot actively search prospects without your own MLS. For the sake of time, we're going to pretend a couple things here. Every single day, you're going to run your hot sheet, okay? Your hot sheet is going to be for whatever area. This hot sheet is set up to search Marina Valley, obviously, okay? Um, if that's your market, that's great. If you are only working North Marina Valley, that's fine. If you're going to be Marina Valley, Riverside, Parish, whatever it happens to be, that's fine. And by the way, within the system, you guys know this, you can have multiple hot sheets, okay? Uh, which is nice because, you know, back when I was working expired, you couldn't have multiple hot sheets. You just got what you got, all right? So whatever criteria, and let's again, we're going to make a, we're going to pretend right now. Normally, a hot sheet would come out and would say, "Hey, there's, let's just search these, put this in a little bit better category." You run your hot sheet, and it says, oh, "Okay, we've got." Kind of weird that these new listings. Does that happen a lot? Brand new listing immediately goes pending. Brand new listing oh, immediately yeah. goes sold. Oh, constantly. All the time. At 145, absolutely. At that price. I like how this new listing was sold right away. It usually what do you think the chances are that's double-ended? Okay, <laughs> let's not get hung up on that. So you run your new hot sheet, and you've got your new listings. Okay, so we've got new listings here. Let's just assume these were all active. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about additional prospecting. Um, if you sat through some of my other classes, um, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so let's segue away from Aspireds for a minute and talk about our daily prospecting regimen. Let's pretend that you have a calendar, and your calendar for Thursday is, okay, here's my calendar, Marina Valley Training. Let's pretend this is your calendar, and your calendar says every day between 7 a.m. and 11 a.m. I work preview properties, new listings, pending listings, expired listings. So you can lump it all together. So I'm going to segue away from, from expireds a little bit, and I'm going to say my calendar says every day I preview property, go out and look at new listings, look at expires, look at pendings, look at sales. So I'm going to go back here, I'm going to run my hot sheet, and let's just pretend for a minute that there's five new listings, okay? And I'm going to take a look, and maybe some of these are in my farm, maybe some of them are just in my global terrier territory, maybe they're just I want to take a look at. So I decide that I want to take a look at LaSalle. So I'm going to click on LaSalle. Bring, this is just listed. 
let's pretend, okay? It just came on the market within the last 24 hours, around the hot sheet yesterday. Ring, ring, let's also pretend it's occupied and it's got a seller's. Um, I have the ability to contact the seller. Um, Karen Massey, where's my staff? Where's my people at? Yeah, the side. Over there. Show me. Show instructions. Over. All the way over. Over. There you go. Ah, so that's the owner, Chris? No. Chris, no, Lance Martin, agent. Cobalt Banker Town and Country. I see that um, Karen Massey, oh, by the way, Karen is a great agent. I've known her for years. She could have, you know, she's fantastic. Never said anything bad about the listing agent. And I see she listed your condo on LaSalle Unit B. I'm in the area today. I'd like to come by and preview your condo between 8 o'clock and noon. Is it okay if I come by or would this afternoon be better? Keep in mind, I don't want to really see it this afternoon, but I'm giving the alternate close, right? Sure, Lance. Great. I'm so excited. I didn't realize someone would call so quickly. Yeah, no, that just happened. It just came up. I preview property. Do you have a buyer? No, I don't. Why are you coming by? I'm coming by because I want to preview property. I want to take a look at the brand new condo that just came up for $145,000. And I may have a buyer in the future or I'm just out doing market research, right? So you guys sat in the class before and we've done that. Knock, knock. He says, great, you come by. I come by. Hey, Chris, here I am. We are not, I repeat for the video, we are not trying to steal or poach a listing. The house was just listed and I've already said, which is true, it's listed with Karen. I've known Karen for 25 years. Karen's a sharp agent. And even if she was a, a, a dipshit, I'm not trying to poach her, her listing. So I come in. Hey, Chris, thank you for letting me in. Here's my card. I'm in and out in 30 seconds. No small talk. Okay? We're not there to talk to these guys because we're prospecting. We don't have time for And by the way, it's already listed. All right? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. I've made a mental picture. I now know what the condo on the sale unit B $145,000 looks like. And frankly, if I've been doing this every single day, or at least multiple days a week for a period of time, three, six months, a year, two years, I already know before I've even gotten there, is this priced right? Or is it priced? And by the way, let's suppose I know before I even get there. Let's just pretend that we feel this is way overpriced. Do I go see it? Mm -hmm, yeah. Maybe. Okay. And I do the same, and do I tell them it's overpriced? Of course not. I just go in. All right. Hey, thank you very much, Chris. I really appreciate it. I'm a neighbor. Now I'm out there, and there's a couple, three houses around there, right? Or I see Eric out walking to his car. I got my car. Oh, hey. My name's Lance Mark, Old Baker Town and Country. Um, you live in the neighborhood? Yeah, you live in the neighborhood. Hey, just want to show you your neighbor just listed his house. Probably doesn't even have a sign up yet. Nobody even knows about it. Your neighbor just listed his condo for $145,000. You know, but he might be interested in buying or selling the neighborhood. Prospecting. What? 145? Is that, th is that what they're going for now? Hmm. Sounds like you have some interest. Have you thought about selling your condo? How long have you owned the condo? You just go from there, right? So now, and by the way, going back to my contact management system, when I, assuming I have all of, the, of Chris's name, the owner of, of the condo, I'm probably not putting him, in other words, I'm probably not putting Karen Massey's client in my contact management system. I could, but I'm probably not doing that. But if I talk to Eric, because he's around this new listing, and you give me any sort of feedback whatsoever, I'm good. damn straight. You're going in. Eric Fisher lives by so on and so forth. I was out previewing property. He gave me some indicator, and then I put him in whatever, whatever happens to be. One of the reasons that people, in my opinion, don't go out and prospect and knock doors and do this sort of stuff because they have nothing to say. Okay? If I tell you to go into a neighborhood, which is what, what that's what we've been telling agents for a hundred years, go in and here's it, here's here's your neighborhood, and you just go one, two, three, four, five, six. Lance Mark, which by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. It may not be the most efficient system and most best use of your time, but if you were frankly, if you were to do just nothing other than go up and down the street and pass out cards and say nothing other than I'm a realtor. I'm a realtor. I'm a realtor. With the worst presentation in the world, somebody's going to say, okay, I need a realtor. Okay? But this is a little more targeted. You're, you're accomplishing multiple things at the same time. You're giving yourself a piece of information on what the new inventory is. You're establishing if that's a good price. And I also have an opportunity maybe to speak to Eric as he's walking to the, to the mailbox. Okay? So going back to um, my hot sheet. So I'm going to do that two or three or four times however many I can fit into my designated time frame. Now, if you're only going to do this for a couple of hours a day, 
you may only be able to do two or three properties. And those two or three properties are probably going to have to be clumped very closely together. So you have to be smart about this. Who has no business right now? Okay, good. I didn't want to embarrass anybody. I'll embarrass you because you're brand new. You have no business. You, you, how many hours a day are you going to work, Mohammed? I just started off for surgery. So 12 hours a day. So he's going to work 12 <laughs> hours a day. So in my opinion, what are you going to do with your 12 hours a day? I would spend the 12 hours a day for his next month doing nothing other than going out and previewing property and talking, trying to talk to people like Eric. Okay, so let's suppose I do two or three of those brand new listings that come on the market. Now, again, let's just pretend this is just a straight pending. Now I see a property that's gone pending. Am I going to call, and I know it's back on market, don't pay attention to that. Am I going to call this owner and say, hey, Lance Martin, a couple banker town in the country, I said that your condo just went pending. Can I come out and take a look at it? No, I'm not going to do that. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. So I was like, what the hell are you doing here? There's no reason for you to come by and take a look at my property. But I'm, out, I'm looking at my hot sheet. I'm making some mental notes. And if I've been doing this for an extended period of time, what I'm hoping is going to happen is I'm going to say, oh, shit, the condo that I looked at three weeks ago, what penny? Huh. Okay. And depending upon how important that is to my overall plan, what I may do is instead of calling the owner, um, I don't know if you say one or not, doesn't matter. Instead of calling the owner, I may call Craig Gable. Hey, Craig, Lance, Gold Baker Town and Country. I've been keeping an eye on your condo on Carnation Lane. I actually went and previewed it three weeks ago. Um, looked okay. Um, I noticed it went pending last night. Sometimes they'll just look at me, right? Mm -hmm. that, that, I don't like it when people call me and say, hey, you just saw your list and what would you sell it for? Mm -hmm. some, of, some people don't care. Oh, yeah, I just put an escrow for, for $92,000. If you ask me that, if I'm listening, eh, yeah, I know, dude. Don't ask me that. Did you get full price? You had multiple, I had multiple offers. You could assume it sold for X, but I don't tell them the price. But sometimes if you say, hey, I, just, I, I, looked, I previewed your property three weeks ago. I liked it. I didn't have a buyer for it, but I noticed it just went pending today. Um, well, I bet 50% of the agents, oh yeah, I sold it last night. Full price cash. We're going to close in two weeks. Now, what am I doing with that? Number one, I'm putting it in my head. Number two, if I don't already, what's this guy's name? Craig. Yes. Craig Gable. Oh. No oh, idea who good. this guy is. <laughs> Doesn't look like I have him in my system. I put him in the computer. I put in Craig Gable with Gable Realty, and I put a little note in there. Gave him a call, talked about Connor Carnation. I'm killing multiple birds with a single stone. I'm learning about what's going on in the marketplace. I previewed the property. I have a formation of what these property values are worth. I'm now developing a relationship. Let's pretend Shirley is Craig or Greg or whatever the heck her name is. His name is. I've never met you before. But maybe I have. Maybe you're Karen Massey. Okay? When's the last time I spoke to Karen Massey? I have no idea. But if it hasn't been a while, what better opportunity or excuse, if you will, for me to call Karen Massey? You may think, be thinking, Lance, why in the hell? I thought we were talking about expired listings. And why are you talking about wasting our time talking to, um, talking to an agent? What is, does that do for my business? Well, according to this, I have not at least documented something in Goldmine that I've talked to Karen in at least a couple of years. I know I've talked to her, I've seen her at the gym maybe a year and a half ago, <coughs> but now I have a reason to call her. Hey Karen, which is a different conversation than the one I just had with Craig Gable. I don't know Craig, but now I have a little bit of a connection. So now I'm calling Karen. Karen, Lance, hey, what's going on, blah, blah, blah. What you ever talked to you in a long time? Hey, I, I saw your condo three weeks ago and I noticed it went pending and I was just checking things out. Now again, if you know these agents, it's amazing the type of information they'll give you. Whether they should or not, it's a whole other argument. But I've known Karen for 25 years. Oh yeah, oh, that was a dump. You're not going to believe it though, man. I got $8,000 above the asking price. Man. Now again, what good does that do me? Maybe nothing, but now I've got a little piece of information. I'm putting it into my overall plan. I now have a better idea that this condo sells for X amount of bucks. I've reestablished some communication with Karen that I hadn't had before, okay? 
And now I'm going to take a look at seeing what I can do to enhance that relationship with Karen. Maybe there's something else that's going to come out of that conversation. Karen, even this dad is actually old, Karen doesn't um, work in Marina Valley anymore. She, I'm not even sure she's working in Riverside anymore. Maybe that's an opportunity for me to figure out, hey, I haven't talked to you in a while. Where are you? Oh, watch, I'm actually in Corona. Jeez, next time you're taking a listing for an $80,000 condo in Marina Valley, come on, man, let me help you out with that. Let me just refer to that for you. Maybe that's, maybe I'm asking too much. But anyway, you're going to develop that relationship. So that's going to give me an opportunity to <coughs> communicate with Karen. Now, we did our pendies. I don't know if there was anything that was sold down here. Okay, now we got a soul. What? Isn't that great? No, this actually, I just noticed something. This search is for condos in Marine Valley. Yeah. Because <laughs> everything we're looking at is condos. Yes, yeah, so it's okay. subtype condominium. Okay, yeah, forget about the basics. We're just using these as examples. So now I see one that's sold. Um, maybe it's the same one. Maybe it's Chris's. All right, now do I call Chris? And say, hey Chris, it's Lance Martin, a couple banker again. I was at your property 45 days ago. Remember, I was the very first guy to see it when it came onto the market. Um, do I call him and say that? Congratulations, it's sold. No, I don't. Do I call Karen and say, hey Karen, congratulations, your property's been sold? <laughs> Probably not. But at a minimum, now I've now I've I've I've, I've kind of closed the loop on my prospecting, or at least on my previewing. I saw the condo 60 days ago, listed for X. I saw it went pending. Maybe I kind of got some information on what it sold for or not. And now I see it's gone sold. So now mentally, I, I'm an expert. And then maybe, just maybe, <coughs> in my computer, I have I have Eric Fisher in here. And then we have three of you. Um, and then maybe in here, I have an action that says, follow up with that guy that I ran into at the mailbox. The very first day, I went by to take a look at the condo. Because part of the discussion that we had was, would you please let me know what it sells for when it sells? I might be thinking about selling. Hopefully, I've been in communication with him before. But this is going to trigger those type of, of, of communications. And then maybe it will trigger even better. Maybe if, it's, if I'm going to be in the neighborhood anyway, I might actually go over not to knock on the condo's door, but to knock on your door. Hey, Eric, remember me? <coughs> Which, by the way, is that a cold call or a warm call now? It's warm. warm. That's warm. Got my cobalt banker thing on. I just met you 60 days ago. And, and the reality is, if I just met you 60 days ago and I now see you 60 days later, in most cases, doesn't it feel like we just saw each other like a week ago, or two weeks ago? Hey, dude, I know it seems like just a week ago, but it was two months ago that I was here. And you remember that condo I talked to you about? We closed escrow. You said express some interest. It closed for 138000 bucks. Have you thought about selling? Is that price within the range? Does that meet your needs? Would, if, if, it, if, it, if it sold for... What price, if, what price, you know, I thought about selling, but I just don't know. I mean, what would it have to be worth in order for you to consider selling? So again, we're going through the process. So going back to the solds, now again, I wouldn't necessarily do this on every single property in the MLS because there's just not enough time in the day. But let's pretend for a moment, which by the way, you better darn well have um, hot sheets run on your farm. Okay, so if you're farming, you're definitely going to go up. Not Again, you're not going to go to the sole property to say hi to the seller as they're moving out, right? But you're going to be in the neighborhood, and maybe you're going to have a flyer, or maybe you're going to have a door hanger, and you're going to have a, hey, did you know? 15643 of the sale unit 10 just closed escrow yesterday for 138. And again, whatever area. Maybe it goes out to your entire farm. Maybe you just are going to hit 10, 15 doors, whatever it happens to be, but you're going to do that. Now, again, if this is in your farm, well, if it's in your farm, you already have them in here already, right? Mm -hmm. You already have, let's just pretend this is Willow Street. If it's in your farm, you already have the property. You maybe have, this is the asset, let's just work with me on this. You have the owner's name. You, you had an offer on this? Yeah. You must have written an offer on this. Okay. Um, how cool would it be? 
we're going to segue into contact management a little bit. I haven't talked to Eric in six years. Eric calls me up about something. I very quickly pull up Eric's contact. I, I can't remember him from Adam, but within a couple seconds, oh dude, it's been a while. Remember that offer you wrote on Willow Tree? And now he may remember because he's you're a little more attached. You know, you, you, most agents tend to remember. Well, maybe not. You may. I re no, I remember that. You may. Okay. Because it was it was it was a mess. It was a mess. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, <laughs> but at any rate, did, how cool of a connection is that? Now, I, did I really remember you? Wrote, hell no, I didn't remember you wrote an offer in Willow Tree. But now we got a better connection. But again, forget about that. This is the sellers. This is the guy. This is Chris. I just sold. Mm -hmm. So now I put an action on Willow Tree. I put an action over here pending that says, hey, follow up with new owner. And let's pretend this is today's Thursday. Sunday, I'm going to drive by the condo. And what am I hoping for? I'm hoping to run into the new home owner moving into the property. Now, if I happen to get there and it's the old owner moving out, well, that's okay. I'm there. I'm in the neighborhood. Hey, Chris. Congratulations. I noticed you sold your house. Where are you moving to? I'm going up north. Okay, great. You know, good luck. Now, that really wasn't what I wanted, but that's fine. But am I hoping that the new owner is moving in? And what am I going to do? Hey, new owner, Lance Martin, Cold Baker Town and Country. Welcome to the neighborhood. I happen to work the area. Um, you're in my farm. Don't really use that term with the, your, the clients. They have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Um, but I happen to work the neighborhood. Okay. Um, I want to welcome you to the neighborhood. Oh, by the way, anything I can help you with, I'd be happy to help you. What do you mean, what can you help them with? They just bought this house. Do they need, do they need a realtor? Is, is it possible that you had a bad experience with your realtor? Mm -hmm. <laughs> possible? Now, I'm not saying I can help them fix the bad experience you have with this realtor, but is it possible? Who's the, mo who's the biggest champion of a neighborhood? In the, in the, we have 300 houses. You just moved in. Who loves that neighborhood more than you do right now? Nobody. Nobody loves that neighborhood more than you do. You just moved in. You're the most excited. You're the most engaged. And what do people do? What do they do when they tell when they moved mm -hmm. into a neighborhood? They go to work. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna believe this. Mm -hmm. We closed our store in our house. The neighborhood is fantastic. Mm -hmm. We love it. Oh really? Where'd you move again? Oh, we moved to the north side of of Redlands. Really? Oh my God, it's fantastic. Well, my husband and I have been making love. Oh really? Well, you know what? My agent's an idiot. But I ran into this really nice guy on Sunday as I was moving. Obviously, I'm taking the story to an extreme. But you want to talk to the new owners. One of the things, and I challenge anybody to do this. If you do this, I promise I will perform. You're moving in. I say, I tell you what, I work the neighborhood a lot. I also happen to have a crew that helps us with handyman's and repairs. I've noticed that when a lot of people move into their properties, after that first weekend or the second week, you end up with a lot of trash. You end up with a lot of boxes and packing equipment and just stuff that you brought from the old house that you don't want to take. And normally it's too much for the trash people to come and pick up. So you might need to make a special trip to go to the dump. I'll tell you what, I'll, I mean, I, as a welcome to the neighborhood, if you have that stuff, you give me a call and I'd be happy to have my crew come over free of charge <coughs> and remove your move-in stuff. I don't know if that's cool or not. I think it's kind of cool. Have I made a little impression on this guy? Is his, has the agent that was working with you, probably the last time you've seen him is the day they flipped you the keys, and they probably didn't even flip you the keys. They probably said, come pick the keys up in my office in an envelope with your name on Because agents are do poor service. Um, so, those are the souls. Okay, you guys like, wait a minute, when are we going to get to the expires? When are we going to get to the expires? Okay, let's pretend we now have an expired. Let's just pretend this is an expired listing. And I know it took me a half hour to set that up, but I think it's important because the expireds should be part of a larger prospecting. Don't waste your time just focusing on expireds. Go out. If you're going to be in a neighborhood looking at an expired listing and there happens to be within a short drive a new listing that just came on the market, go take a look. Go preview that one. You've got something to talk about. Okay, so. Let's pretend for a moment this is expired. 
Um, one of the challenges with working with expires over the last um, um, couple of years, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, have they stripped out all of the contact information for the seller? Yes. Half the time yes. they don't have it in the whole time. Or they don't have it in for the whole time. Okay. In the old days, it was a lot easier because it would expire. It would say John Jones doesn't have a contact phone number and all the rest of that. Now we've got a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, so how are we going to contact these people? Um, now again, this, and this one says vacant, so going up to, well, let's pretend it doesn't. Let's pretend it, we don't know who the owner is, we don't have any contact information, but at least we know it's, it's owner-occupied. Okay, well in the old days, the phone would blow up, some agents, we mentioned Hugo earlier, um, if you guys know Hugo Valarezzo, some agents many years ago, Hugo, um, I gotta tell you, you may think this is totally inappropriate and totally unprofessional, I will tell you, and I may agree with that, but I got to tell you, he was one of the more successful agents when it came to marketing expired listings. And what he would do is he would call the expireds literally at dawn. It's six o'clock in the morning. Ring, ring. Hello? <laughs> hey, John. Lance Martin, Cobalt Banker, in his case, Hugo Valorezzo, because he was the one who did it. I'll credit him. Hey, this is Hugo with Remax All-Stars. Um, I apologize for calling you so early, but I get up and I get working early. And you may not, may or may not be aware of this, but your listing expired in the multiple listing service last night. I wanted to be the first person to call you because your phone is going to start to ring over the next several hours and days. I wanted to make sure you knew I was the first. And again, I apologize. I'm sure a lot of people said, what? You took that risk. And you know what he did on the ones that hung up on him? Well, he might not have called him again later, at least that same time. But whether they hung up on him or they gave him some sort of positive or some sort of negative, step two was, there's, let's just say there's five expires that I'm going to look at that day. If I could call him, I'd call him. Again, that's tough. Now, you may have the ability to pull up a phone number on some sort of a directory and be able to have access to that. And if you can, make the phone call. If you can't, step two is... Hello. Hey, it's Lance Martin. And you try to do it as early as possible. Now, do you run the risk of finding people not home? Of course you do. It's, it's prospecting. And, you got that. and if they're not home, then of course we're going to leave whatever marketing material we have behind. Um, but if they are home, hey, Lance Martin, Cold Baker Town and Country. Yeah, I'm the guy who called you this morning and said, I do what do you I understand. However, the property just been deleted from the system. You're going to have a whole bunch of people are going to come up and and approach you, a bunch of realtors looking for your business. Some of them are going to be very professional, and some are going to be less than professional. I apologize for waking you up, but I'm a hard worker and I want to earn your business. Something like that. Are you still in the market to sell your house? Which, by the way, remember when we were selling the pin the other day? Yeah, this is the um, Wolf of Wall Street thing? No. Hey, sell me this pin. Mm. Well, it's, it's a beautiful blue pen, and mm. it's ink. Right, nice, and it's lightweight, compact. Is that how you sell the pen? Mm -hmm. No, it's not how you sell the pen. <coughs> Are you in the market for a pen? <laughs> Do you plan on being in the market for a pen? Have you ever been in the market for a pen? Have you ever owned a pen? <laughs> You're trying to get hit. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I've owned a pen. Oh, how long have you owned your pen? I've owned it for 10 years. Have you ever thought about selling that pen and getting another pen? Right? This is sales, guys. Mm -hmm. Not, I have a blue pen and you have to buy it. <laughs> <laughs> we have to determine, do you have the need for another blue pen? So when we're talking about expires, me showing up, I'm Lance Martin, I'm here to list your house. I didn't ask you if you needed me. My name is Lance Martin. Last night your property came off the market. It was deleted. I like the word deleted. Mm -hmm. Eric and I were talking about this. Deleted just sounds so serious. Mm -hmm. When you say expired, to be honest with you, a lot of people, a lot, again, when you go into a neighborhood and you tell a seller I'm farming your neighborhood, it's kind of foreign to them. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you tell them your listing has expired, a lot of people may not really understand. What, you know, contract ended with my agent, expired. But when you tell them, Oh, by the way, your listing has been deleted from the multiple listing server. What? 
especially if, by the way, how many properties expire from the multiple listing service and the first person to let the seller know that is an agent from another company? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I would say most. Mm -hmm. Most sellers, when their listings expire, they actually didn't realize that, oh, well, I guess it has been three months or four months or whatever it happens to be. Or their agent never called them up and said, oh, by the way, your listing's going to expire. Our contract is going to end on Friday. I'd like to get an extension and kick it out. They don't do that. So the first time they hear about it is from when the phone starts ringing. By the way, what happens if I have a great relationship with my... I have a great relationship with my seller. My seller wants to sell. But somebody else calls them and tells them that their listing has been deleted from the MLS. Have I done a little bit, maybe irreparable damage to our relationship? But I've at least done a little bit of damage, don't you think? Because now they're going to call me. Hey, Lance, uh, I just got, actually, I got seven calls. And I also got a um, um, bunch of people knocking on my door. And my voicemail got, which, by the way, you want to be, who wants to be a professional expired listing getter? Okay. In your farm, remember earlier? When we were talking about, which one was it? Was this the one that we looked at? It doesn't matter. Let's just pretend that this has a seller's name on it. Sophia. Okay? When this first came on the market, this is in my farm, by the way. It's not necessarily just out there. But when it first came on the market, it's in my farm. It's listed with somebody else. I, it's in my farm. I want to have, I'm going to somewhere make a notation. One, two, three, Main Street, Sophia. I'm going to put her contact information on it. Because I want to have that contact information when this listing, if and when this listing expires. Because when it does expire, it's going to be stripped out. Now, I'm one of very few people that actually have the contact information for the seller. So now I can call her. And I might be only one, only person who has her number other than the listing agent. Everybody else has to go knock on the door or send a piece of mail. But when you have a listing that expires and your seller is the one that notifies you that it's expired, that may not be the death of the relationship, but I gotta tell you, embarrassing conversation to have. Yeah, I don't wanna be that agent. I don't wanna be that agent that, oh, oh, that was a mistake. Oh, I should have. Not good. So at any rate, when I'm knocking on that door, oh, Lance Martin, Gold Banker Town and Country, um, your listing was deleted from the mall, got my pen. Your pen was deleted. Your listing was deleted from the multiple listing service. Are you still interested in buying a pen? Are you still interested in selling your house? Mm -hmm. Okay. Not, I want to sell your house. Mm -hmm. Are you still interested in selling your house? Or again, you might want to even phrase the question a little bit differently. Instead of informing them, oh, by the way, your house was del deleted from the multiple listing. My name is Lance Martin with Cold Banker Town and Country. Are you aware that your house was deleted? I bet 50% of the answers to that are no. Oh, well, it was. Your, your agreement with your current agent has expired. Are you still interested in selling your house? Oh, yeah. In fact, I thought I had somebody helping me with that, but apparently not. And again, you're going to get a whole lot of a backup because you're going to, in theory, now again, a year ago, was anybody working expired listings? No. Today, is anybody working expired listings? Yeah, I'm getting a little bit. I, I'm, I'm like, eh. A few. I think we all need to be out working expired listings. All of us need to be out working expired listings. All right? So, again, now I'm on your door. Maybe I get you, maybe I don't. Now, obviously, it's it, the, the no-brainer, of course, is, well, yeah, you know what? I really wasn't happy with my agent anyway, and you did call me at 6 a.m., and you're the first person here, and, you know, do you have the paperwork with me? Let's get now. Okay, that's an easy one. Okay, well, does it happen like that all the time? Of course not. Will that happen? If you do this every single day, consistently, that's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to happen tomorrow. I don't know if it's going to take a year from now. But you will bump into somebody who will say, yeah, I'm ready. Come on in. I don't have any time to waste. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm leaving the country tomorrow, and I need to get this taken care of. Has anybody ever had that happen? Have anybody ever called them? I, I, I like look at Sherry because I know you've been doing this so long. Have you ever had anybody just call you and said, I need my house listed now. I'm leaving town like in six hours. Mm -hmm. That's how I got that. Was there you go. Yeah. Out of the blue. Yeah. Somebody you never had any contact with before. Right? It happens. Mm -hmm. It happens. Okay. So um, now we try to make a phone call if we have it. 
We've knocked on our door if we have it. Some sort of basic marketing piece, okay? about who you are. You can have a bio about expired listings, so on and so forth. Um, now, unfortunately, and I say unfortunately because this, this, this portion of what we're going to discuss takes a little more effort, a little bit more money, and more, frankly, of a long-range approach to um, expired listings. However, the reality is, if you're going to have any success at all, you're going to have to incorporate this next phase into your expired listing campaign. Because the reality is, if we went out and, we, and every day this week we went out and we saw five expired listings, so we saw we had 25 in our radar, the reality is we probably would have none of their phone numbers, maybe one or two if we were lucky. If we went and knocked on their door, maybe would, half of them would be vacant, right? Or a percentage would be vacant. Another large percentage wouldn't be home. We maybe would only be able to talk to three or four of them, somewhere maybe 5%, 15%, and if we're lucky. So a lot of the, of the pool of available listings um, were not available to us. So uh, I was, um, Eric and I were, were um, looking at some of this stuff yesterday. I'm going to pull up a, don't laugh. Just because it's old doesn't mean it doesn't work. Um, actually, let's start with this one. Okay, a mailing campaign. A mailing campaign is a nice thing. Now, this is what I used to use. Okay? I don't know that you can still use this today because times have changed. When I was working expired listings, um, this was in the um, late 80s and early 90s, and this was pre 9 11 and pre-terrorist and a little different mindset. But the setup for this, this is a letter by the way. And don't laugh because this is like the oldest font available. When they first came out with computers, they didn't have oh, Times Roman and all the rest of this sort of stuff. So the setup for this was the following. I would get, and by the way, I wasn't sending out thousands of these. I'd send out between three and 10 a day. 10 expires. Get a little tube a little shipping tube that you send like a diploma a certificate in that you want to send in the mail so it doesn't get destroyed. Little tube, just enough to put one letter size document in it. And it was red and it was about this long. And we put caps on the end and at one of the caps we had a little it looked like it looked like this. It looked like a just a little piece of, of, of wire hanging out, which was supposed to be if it was supposed to look like a stick of dynamite. So this is a little fuse, which is why we can't do that. Okay. Uh, so you can't do that, but that, but, but again, go with me on this. And it was red, so, and I would mail this letter. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, dear Jones, bang, your listing is dead. Now again, you may think, oh, that's kind of tacky and inappropriate. I loved it, and I got to tell you, it worked. And it was different, because when someone went to their mailbox and they opened up this little thing, and at first they might not have realized it didn't necessarily look like a firecracker, which is kind of what it was supposed to. But then when they opened it up and they said, bang, and then they looked at it and said, oh, okay, it's supposed to be a little, ha, ha, I just blew them up. I blew up everything. So, bang, your listing is dead. Your property at 123 Main Street, which, by the way, you need to have contact management system, the ability to mail merge this, because these letters are personalized. So when I do this, I put this into my goldmine system, and it's just bring up Eric Fisher, and um, it's going to mail merge, Eric Fisher, are you still at the street? Yep. You're not? Okay, it's going to mail that, it's, the letter's going to merge, dear Eric, if this is his address, it's going to merge his address in there, so all of that stuff is done for me, it's all nice and clean and done. So it would merge in here, Eric Fisher at his address, dear Eric, bang your listing is dead, it would insert his property address, has been deleted from the computer provided by the this you put in, this Inland in Valleys Association of Realtors. I love this part. Now whether you like this letter or not, take this letter and modify this letter. This part of the letter I think is beautiful. It's short, it's simple, it's to the... I'm going to give you copies of all this stuff. During the next few weeks, it is likely that you will be overwhelmed by real estate agents and brokers that will contact you and offer to list your property. Is that a true statement? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So I love this, this statement, I really love. <coughs> Some of these offers, whether by telephone or mail or in person, will be of high quality. And unfortunately, some will not. Is that a little jab mm -mm. at some of those people that were a little less professional? Are they going to get some less professional stuff? Yeah. They are. 
Um, let's go back, and again, I, I shouldn't be using Hugo's name personally. Having said that, when I talk about Hugo and what he did, I actually, I'm being complimentary. Having said that, some people might think calling someone at 6 o'clock in the morning is unprofessional, right? So, and, and I, you may, I used to think it was unprofessional, and I used to look at all the darn expired listings he was getting. I said, well, a large percentage of these people apparently didn't think it was unprofessional, and that they did in the beginning, he must, he convinced them later on that it was a positive trick. He was aggressive. He was up early, he was working hard. So at any rate, I would send this letter. Before you make any decisions, please take a moment to review my qualifications. I am whatever you are. Insert your qualifications here. I have sold more. Now again, if you're brand new, you may not have any qualifications. I'm the newest agent in town. I'm the best looking agent in town. That's true. That's right. That's right. So, so you put whatever you got here. I want to put my skills to work for you. Again, getting back to the dynamite, I'm going to blow the thing up. A dynamite marketing program, yeah, yeah. Okay, a basic letter. You can use something like that. You can tell, obviously, again, sending out the dynamite thing today. Go back to the bottom. The bottom. Yes. I want to see that PS. Ah, I haven't closed the post of card if you prefer to respond by mail. Now, another thing that um, I, should, I would do, I don't want to turn this into a commercial for our property management department. Who wants to make 500 bucks? On the bottom, you want to try, I, I, if you do this, I bet you a dollar, at the end of the year, I'll probably put somewhere between two and five thousand dollars in your pocket. Now again, you have to do some marketing. If you're not going to do marketing, it's not going to work. But if you do this one little thing, did I say guarantee? Oh, I think I said I bet you. <laughs> no, you said absolutely guaranteed. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you send out, if you truly work expires and you work this other business and you're sending out a couple thousand of these pieces a year, <clears throat> I guarantee you I'll put two to five thousand dollars in your pocket if you just add the following sentence. If you're not interested in selling now, however, still need to move you might want to consider our property management service. Okay? I'm not sure if that's exactly how I put it. If, you're still need, if, if your needs still require you to move, however, selling is no longer an option, and you've considered renting your home, maybe you would consider our property management service. Just that. Maybe that's a PS. Will you get somebody that's going to call you? Mm -hmm. I did. I wasn't even trying. I wasn't even trying to sign up rentals. I was looking for listings. I don't know, 5%, 2% of the people would call me and say, hey, I saw that thing about property management. Yeah, we're not, we can't sell anymore, but you know, we did get the job transfer, and we tried to get 215 for it, and the market wouldn't support it, and the best we could get apparently is 180, and we think we're going to rent it out, maybe try it again next year. Is that a bingo? Okay. Now again, if you're like, oh wait a minute, Lance, I don't want this. this isn't a commercial for property management. This is not a commercial for property management. This is a, a, a commercial for contact management, contact follow-up, and future pipeline of business. Property management department is what I like to refer to as my incubator. Okay? You sent out a letter saying, do you want to sell your house? <clears throat> they looked at it and said, I'm no longer interested, and they threw it away. You threw in a tagline. If you're not interested in selling anymore, but you still have to move and you're considered renting, maybe we can help with property management. They responded back, and you say, Mr. Fisher, let me introduce you to our property management department. We now connect them. Mm -hmm. I, give you, I give you somebody 500 bucks. <laughs> now, what did, what would, why are you renting the property? You're renting it because you couldn't get the price you needed today. You thought maybe if you rented it for a little while, maybe the price would go up, and then it would. Then you would then be what? Then you would be a what? You'd be a seller, ready to sell. In which case, the property management company comes back and says, "Remember that landlord that you gave us last year? They're now ready." Or better yet, I'm following up with Eric every. Now I'm following up with him every two, three, four, six months. Hey Eric, it's Lance, Cold Baker Town and Country. And, you know, we talked to you, I referred you over to Aubrey and Property Management. Are they doing okay? <laughs> oh yeah, they're doing good, they got to run things. Okay. All right, cool. 
just wanted to follow up with you. Then I tickle them and I say, oh, I want to call them up in 10 months, because normally the property management agreements run for 12 months. Mm -hmm. Hey, Eric, it's been 10 months. I have notes. When we spoke last year, you said the reason you, didn't, you, you took the property off the market or when it expired, you didn't want to sell is because you needed to get 210 and at the time it was only worth 180. Guess what? It's at 215. Would you now be interested in buying a pen at 215 as opposed to, right? So it's an incubator. It's an incubator for your clients. So a very simple, oops, a very simple letter like this I found very effective. There's a couple others in here. <coughs> and by the way, does anybody already have some can letters? Is anybody using some letters like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you already got a couple. And, and by the way, they can be they can be anything. Um, again, they use the word delete. The other one, um, bang your listing was dead. Yada yada. I, I I like the word deleted. And this is these aren't my letters, by the way. I, I bought these letters 25 years ago, and they're just as valid today as they were 25 mm -hmm. years ago. Your property at one two three Main Street was deleted from the computer. Basically, the same sentence. Some offering the same sentence. Same sentence. Same sentence. This was just a little. Instead of hey, the dynamite and bang your listing is dead. It's basically the same letter which takes out the gimmick of the firecracker. Okay? Very simple letter. Postcards, I know um, Eric's doing some stuff with some postcards. Um, so, now this is, now again, you know, if you're going to do this, you have to have a contact management system. Because this is how this is going to work. You're going to, um, let me create a new person. Oh, by the way, does this take some time? Mm -hmm. um, if you if you don't have the budget, then you have to do it yourself. If you do have the budget, maybe you get assist, assistant, whatever it happens to be. Um, in my contact management system, um, let's just I'm, I'm going to make some stuff here. Let's just pretend this guy is in my my Green River farm, which is not really a farm, but he's in my Green River farm. I'll put in my address. And I may, maybe I have a phone number, maybe I don't. This is critical. Okay. So, now I have everything I need in order to mail merge my batch of clients for the day. So what I would do, who's, who's done mail merge in their contact management system? then you guys know what I'm talking about. You isolate the five leads for the day. So I want to send them this bang your listing is dead letter. Okay. Um, it'll import the appropriate name. I've tagged them as an expired prospect. One of the reasons I've tagged them as an expired prospect is because I want to be able to track my expired prospects. <coughs> One of the ways I can do that is I can look up my expired prospects. Every single one of these people or expired prospects at some point in time in my database, okay? And, I'll, and how long did it take me to pull those up? Second. About a second. Mm -hmm. They're all isolated here, because I wish working expires. Let's pull up our, let's just show you how long ago we've been doing this. <coughs> this guy was put in the system August 28th of 2001 by Olga, my assistant. She plugged this person in. This person probably got a letter. <coughs> Let's take a look at it. Got a form. We got our expired letter. What did it say? Number one. Mm -hmm. Game expired letter one. So they got a letter. And then they maybe got some emails, and then they got a few other things. But as you put these people, I'm going to go back to John Jones. If you're using automated processes, we're using drip systems and all the rest of that sort of stuff, and we talked about this just a couple of days ago when we were in the um, portal class. Are you, are you using Top Producer? No, I'm using, uh, I'm using Google Contacts. Google Contacts, okay. Um, I, don't, I don't use Google Contacts. I'm certain that there's a way to put some campaigns together. Mm -hmm. But one of the nice things you could do is you create a campaign. And the campaign is, on day one, send letter one. Your listing has expired, it's been deleted, you want and so forth. On day seven, send letter two. It's been seven days. I haven't heard back from you. Are you still considering selling your house? On day 30, 
or day nine or whatever you choose, you can send multiple. And by all that all happens automatically. So you just go into your queue and you print your letters for the day. You go in every day and say, what do so you're going to send out? And this is the beautiful part about this. If you're doing five or six or eight a day, in a couple of months, you're going to come into the office, you're going to go to the printer, you're going to put the letter in there, you're going to click print, and you're going to have 200 letters that are going to come out. And they're all going to be different. And they're all going to be going to different people. And they're all going to be on different parts of the prospect. Now, hopefully, you know, there's the new way of doing this, and that's the email. So God forbid you ever get somebody's email. You know, we don't have to send them a 50 cent stamp and a letter all the time. That gets expensive. Back in the old days when I was doing this sort of stuff, I was sending out hundreds of dollars. Uh, and God, I don't even know what stamps were you know, 10 years ago. 30 cents or whatever it happens to be. So you want to put them all into your contact management system, into your prospect system. So now, going back to the MLS, um, I'm now out. I'm in the neighborhood. I'm going kind of, I'm, I'm kind to of jump back a half a step or so. I've knocked on the doors. They're there. They're not there. Going back to our overall prospecting, I'm in the neighborhood, right? Mm -hmm. Nobody's home. What do I do? Get my car and leave? No. I go to the next door neighbor. Lance Martin, Global Word, whoever, whoever's within the immediate area. Keep in mind, the Remax sign is still out in front of the house. Again, you guys may not be comfortable with this. You might even think, oh, that's borderline. I don't have a problem with this. If you do, don't do it. I'm not going to. Now, the guy I wanted to talk to is not home. I see the neighbor across. Let's use Eric again. Eric's across the street. Hey, sir, Lance Martin, Gold Banker Town Adventure. I actually was here to talk to your neighbor. Um, he's not home. Um, by the way, nice house. I looked at the MLS. It was listed, it was listed for $250,000. Um, I'm actually here because this listing was deleted on the MLS last night. I was wondering if you might still be interested in selling. Isn't it amazing how much information you can get from a neighbor? <laughs> Do neighbors like to talk about their neighbors? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you're out, forget about whether you ask. Sometimes when you're out in the neighborhood, you're just don't knock and you're talking. I'm, I'm looking to see if you're interested. And you got, oh, you know, Sally and Jim, because he beats her. <laughs> she's been telling us. Oh my God! I mean, the studs. Anybody ever had something like that? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh my God! <clears throat> Sometimes I. Oh my God, that one really. guy tells you, everybody in the tract what's going on. They're all business. <laughs> yeah. Okay. They know. Now again, part of what I'm doing is I, 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 the guy I wanted to talk to is not home. I don't have a phone number. I left a marketing piece on his door. He's got a for sale sign in his yard. I run across his neighbor across the street. And here's my, oh, by the way, if you happen to see your neighbor, if you wouldn't mind telling him I, I came by, I'm, I'm curious if he's still interested in selling Here's himself. his number. I know he wants to sell. Mm -hmm. Let me go, let me go in and get Jim's number for you. I've got a sister who wants to buy in this neighborhood. Or I got a sister. My, my or, brother wants that house. Or whatever. Right? <clears throat> so you've got to multitask. You have to be efficient, efficient use of your time when you're out doing this. And now, God forbid, on the way up there, you see a for sale by owner, or you see you know, somebody else out in the neighborhood. This is what this is all about. The most efficient use of your time when you're out. Not Don't just, oh, I'm only looking at these expired today. I don't want to look at the other three listings. I don't want to look at this. I don't want to look at that. That doesn't work. Okay. So we've, we've tried to call. Maybe we have a number. Maybe we don't. We've knocked on the door. And, and again, I kind of blew past that pretty quickly. But if you do get them at the door, again, there is, we are, are we, what, we're, what do we call us? What, where, what, what profession are we in? Other than we're realtors. We're, we're, this is a sales business. <coughs> to me, that is not a dirty word. Having said that, nobody likes to be sold. There is a big difference between a professional salesperson and some guy pushing stuff. Don't push. And a certain amount of sales is required. Getting back to the pen. You want to buy my pen? You want to buy my pen? You need a pen? You got a blue pen? Blue, blue. Actually, you said I need it. That was actually a good question to ask. You know, don't sell me. Don't sell Cobalt Banker. Don't sell Lance. Sell, do you still have the need? House. Once they establish the need, then you can talk about the blue pen. Don't talk about the blue pen until they at least have expressed that they've got the need. Oh, I don't have the need. Oh, do you think, so you decide you're not going to sell today. Do you think that that might change at some point later in the year? 
No. Hmm. If the prices were to go up 30%, you think they yeah. might reconsider and need to sell your house. Looking for some sort of a trigger, you know? And it, it, so, okay, ah, so if prices went up another 30% and you were able to get 210, which is what you've been asking and everyone's been telling you it's worth 150, then the need to sell your house is in play. Would it be okay if I got your phone number and I could call you back and get you more information? And if and when the properties go back up to the two hundred ten thousand dollars, would it be? But I could I have your permission to call you back. It's just a different way to present it. This with me. This with me. This with me. That's going to work. Okay. So we've knocked on the door. We've done the thing. We've sent out a couple <coughs> letters. Now you can't do this for all of them. Okay. But I would suggest that let's say you're going to do what, what's a realistic number of properties that you think you can do in a day or a week. How many properties can you put into your database, physically go out and see, knock on doors per day? How many? Ten. Ten's a lot, but yeah. it can be done. Ten can be done, but that's a lot. That's a day. Mm -hmm. Now, if they're all in the same neighborhood, then yeah. that's a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to find ten expires. But, but let's, let, I, uh, let's just stick with Eric's number because it's more math. Let's just say it's three to five. Let's just say it's three. Okay? So three a day. Out of the three, pick one. If you could pick one of the three that you would like the listing, if you could just say, all three of these people are going to say, yes, I want to relist and I want to list with you, but you can only choose one. Which one do you want? Okay, well, I want this one. Do a full-blown market analysis. Okay. Everyone knows how to do a market analysis? Mm -hmm. you know, what's the problem with doing a market analysis in, um, what's the problem with doing a market analysis in the MLS? Somebody. What's the if, if, let, let's suppose I'm interviewing agents. I'm interviewing five agents. And I say, come on over and do me do a market analysis, listing presentation on me. All of us have access to what? Yeah, yeah, the same data. Yeah. The market analysis look the same. same. Mm -hmm. Right now, we, they may look different because maybe Eric does a better definition of the properties on the search. Robbins is a little too broad, mine's, is a, mine's a little too narrow, but Eric's is, he's taking the time to know what he's doing. But other than that, they all look the <coughs> same, okay? So it's a little challenging to just strictly use the market analysis, the canned market analysis that comes out of the MLS, right? Okay. Especially if they're going to do, and by the way, this is an expired listing. Several realtors will approach me over the middle several next days. Mm -hmm. Some of them will be professional, others unfortunately not so much. Many of them are going to do what? They're going to do exactly what I'm saying. There are people that are going to show up with the market analysis. So let's suppose there's two or three market analyses. Market analyses? <laughs> <laughs> let's let's a few, suppose there's a few CMAs. Okay? And um, now you're opening them up and saying, oh, it's, what's this? Is that how, is that the, how, that's how the real estate business works? They're all kind of cookie cutter stuff. They all have access to the same. You got to do something to set yourself apart. Mm -hmm. One of the I, I know Williams using top producer. Anybody else using top producer? Mm -hmm. Okay. I really like stuff that's in top producer because it's very customizable. You can still use the CMA that comes out of the MLS, but throw some top producer customized pages on it. Mm -hmm. Make some of your own customizable pages on it. Pop some Cobalt Banker customizable pages on it. <coughs> Give them a copy of the um, seller servicing agreement. Yeah. Who's, who's using the PowerPoint presentation, the Cobalt Banker listing package? Okay. Use that. Okay. In addition, by the way, if you give them a folder this thick, is there anything wrong with that? No. Mm -hmm. No. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Give them. Um, by the way, you can do this. Give them this. Mm -hmm. Put it in there. Write a cover letter. Property values in Marina Valley have gone up 59.9% in the last two years. Do people know property values have gone up in the last couple years? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think the average person sitting in Marina Valley realizes that in the last two years the property values have gone up 60%? No. no. I, I, I 
was kind of shocked when I saw mm -hmm. that number. And I know the damn number. Just saying 60% just doesn't, doesn't sound right. Send them this. Okay? There's, um, I don't know if I can find it. I'm not quite as maybe prepared for this as I should have been. I used to use. Microsoft Publisher, everyone's got Publisher, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have a Publisher, get it. It's not that expensive. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Simple enough. This, this, this is um, low resolution, but you get the idea. How long does it take me to make this flyer? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. 30 seconds. I have a canned logo. I got my info. <clears throat> I've just got a text box up, box up here. This is a text box that I could put something on, I don't know what's on there. I'm driving up. And by the way, you want to get, you know how I used to do this? I used to be so cool, man. <laughs> I would um, take a color printer with me in the back of my car, with my laptop. I go up to the house. This is an expired listing. Okay? You go up, you take a picture, Pop it into your computer, load it into PowerPoint or, or into a presenter. All my logos are on top. It'd take me 30 seconds to edit that. I've got my little printer in the back with my US, not my USB, with my whatchamacallit. Mm -hmm. It had to be a low output because it needed a, um, even back then you had those inverters. Mm -hmm. Okay? Click print. I print out a single flyer. I have my package. And that was my lead behind piece. I had a little thing, a little personal. By the way, does anybody have any personal brochures? I don't have them anymore. You think? All of us should think about getting a personal brochure. Just a little, little trifold. Something really simple. Just like this. Eric Fisher. Okay? Eric Fisher, Cobble Bank of Town and Country, Fisher Realty Group, whatever you're calling yourself. This is who you are, this is what you do, a little logo, something real simple. <coughs> little leave behind, print out the flyer, knock on the door. Oh, Mr. Jones. Lance Martin, called the Banker Town and Country. Were you aware that your property was deleted from the MLS last night? No, I wasn't. Are you still interested in selling? Oh, I gotta call my realtor. And by the way, if you get that, respect that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't. Let me call, by the way, there's signs to sell in front, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm gonna call John right now. Okay, I get that. Okay, he'll, he'll, he'll verify that it's been sold. Assuming you're still interested in selling, because it sounds like you are, if, there's not, if you've thought about maybe switching realtors, now might be the opportunity to do it since your listing has expired. Here's my information. Oh, by the way, I've taken the liberty to make a flyer on your house. Talk to your realtor. Give me a call back. Now, is it possible that you're going to get a phone call from her realtor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to be that realtor? Call me, Eric. You're her realtor. What are you going to say to me? Hey, Lance, I noticed that you were over at my client's house. Yeah, I've been yeah. working expires pretty heavy, Eric. Yeah, I do the same thing, but, uh, you know, she's she's my sister, and I appreciate it <laughs> if you don't go over there anymore. Yeah. Okay, so she renewed the listing with you? Uh, not yet, but I'm going to be meeting with her next week. All right. Next week, I'll be meeting with her tomorrow. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. and again, all right. That's now again, keep in mind, even though I've, I, I've kind of, you know, I, I have not interfered with his business relationship. If you're really his sister, and that listing was not supposed to expire, it's not my fault that you let that listing expire. And you know that. Mm -hmm. But I don't also want to pick a fight with him. I don't want to be obnoxious. I don't want to be rude. I'm like, oh, dude, I'm sorry, but you know, I've been out working expires. I mean, it's hot and heavy, and it was a really nice house, and you know, I've had a couple expire myself that shouldn't have, and I know how embarrassing and awkward that can be. Mm -hmm. So, all right, buddy, well, good, good luck. Hey, click, very professional. Now, am I going to call her back? Probably. Hey, Shirley, why am I going to go back? Hey, Shirley, 
Um, I left it by here the other day. I did talk to Eric. He said that you were going to relist with him. I haven't seen it come back on the MLS yet. No. So okay, So I might give him 24 or 40 hours. Now, if I see it come back active the next day, right, fair enough. It was your sister. You relisted. No harm, no foul. But you know, if, if the next day, 40 hours later, it's still it's still expired. Bam! I'm there. Most of the agents won't call you back. Most of them won't call. But think about it. Now this. Now again, this is a 10-year-old piece. It what is amazing. Everybody's so spoiled with color copies and printers now. Yeah. It, that's why I say it used to be a big deal. If you were printing stuff in color 10 years ago, you were the bomb, man. Because people just weren't doing it. Those mm -hmm. desktop color laser printers were 3,000 bucks. Mm -hmm. And the little Nvidia portable ones were 3,000 mm bucks. -hmm. They're expensive. But heck, you know, this is how much was this listing? I actually had a zero, zero price on it. But you know, you know, that house was, you know, 200,000 bucks. I sell one house, I'm done. This was the sad, the sad truth. As basic as this flyer is, at least 10 years ago, most of the time, this was a better marketing piece than what the agent who had their house listed for the last mm -hmm. 60 days, 90 days. They didn't have anything. And this was something super simple. And again, a little personal brochure. Mm -hmm. Again, everybody needs to do that. These, we had a thousand of these things printed. It was super inexpensive. I, I think this is just a basic trifold, full color. I think, um, ask Ingrid. I, I think this was like, 300 bucks for a thousand. Is that 30 cents a piece? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and, you know, and I got to tell you, just like the video, don't get hung up on all the graphics and the artwork. Just do something. Just do something. You can always improve on it on the next one. So at any rate, so now you've got a marketing piece that you're going to give them. You've done a full-blown CMA that you're going to give them. And then frankly, it's all about the follow-up. From that point forward, it's all about the follow-up. <coughs> How many times am I now going to follow up again on this particular expired listing? And the answer is forever. Until they list or die, right? <laughs> list or die. Which again brings us back to the contact management system. So if you have a system in play, <coughs> you have the ability to um, follow up and follow up and follow up. I mean, I noticed, hopefully I'm not going to show anything when I shouldn't. I noticed with um, um, with um, Eric, this was actually an email that, that looks like you and Steve exchanged, mm -hmm. um, which is still in there. Well, Steve, even though he's no longer with us, Steve's part of my team. You're, even though you're, you're, you're a fish that's been caught and landed on the deck, kind of a crude way to put it, I guess you got him, right? <laughs> did I just say that out loud? Yeah, you did. Where's your logo, Eric? But sometimes fish yeah. that are on the deck sometimes fall, flop off the deck and they swim over to Keller Williams. All right? Well, i got to do everything I can, recruit and retain, expired listings. I'm worried about Robin. Robin's telling me she's going to go down the street. It's closer to home. I better pay attention to that. I don't pay attention that it's going to be gone. I'm worried about all of you. I am. Okay? <laughs> Just like the expired listing. You get them, you got to nurture them. Never let your listing expire. You're not nurturing your listing. Everything I ever want to do with my client, I have to have in here. Everything that we've ever done with Eric is in here. Every email that you've ever got from Stacy or Ingrid or me or anything that we've ever done is all documented here. <coughs> you bought the, you, well, not only did you do Willow Tree, you also did something on Gorham and Fur and, and Van... COVID, we've actually done, at least we've tried to do some business. What else have we done, Eric? Do you remember writing offers on all these houses? I do. <laughs> right? Those are yours. Yeah, those are all mine. I only sold one of them. Okay. That's some we're investors. Well, we tried. Yeah. Right? It's information. Mm -hmm. What kind of dog do you have? What's its name? How old are your kids? How long have you been married? What's your anniversary? All that sort of stuff. Whether you're farming, prospecting, it, it's expired. It get lit. I now now I have information. You listed with your brother. Mm -hmm. It needs to go somewhere in my contact management system. Mm -hmm. I now pull, I now pull you up. I am new. I kind of got this backwards, but. I 
know it should be typed for demonstration purposes. Sister. Now I've got a sister relationship. I know that Eric and, actually I'm in the wrong spot for this. <coughs> Eric and Shirley are sisters. Eric, you're a sister? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Contact management is the most beautiful thing in the history of things created. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. Now I know Eric and Shirley are linked forever. And all I have to do is come down here and click. Now I'm on Eric's. I double click on this. And I'm on Shirley. Oh, no. I double click on this. I'm back on Eric. What's the relationship? Well, sister, brother. Okay. Now that may seem like silly, stupid information. But if you're in my farm, by the way, we're also putting this in the context of my farm. You've listed with your brother. I've now found out that's your brother. You haven't listed with me. And maybe you don't. Maybe you, maybe I come back three days later and you've listed with Debbie. What the hell? What the brother thing, man? You know? And I missed it, but now I know. And, I, and by the way, am I going to call Shirley and say, you listed with Debbie? Shame on you. Probably shame on me, but tell me, does anybody say anything wrong with this? No. Hey, Shirley, it's Lance Cole, Baker Town and Country. I knocked on your door a couple days ago, your expired listing. I noticed that you're realistic with Debbie. I actually know Debbie. She's a great agent.